Is this man your friend? Tell me where your brother is. He's going south, a long way from here. He's abandoned you out here to me. You don't learn to fight, your death's gonna come real soon. Hi, I'm Leah, and I'm here today with Brenna and a filmmaker, David Michaud, who stopped by to talk to us about his latest film, The Rover. We've all just seen it. This film has been called minimalist and nihilist and existentialist, neo-spaghetti westernist. How did you and actor Joel Edgerton come up with this, this kind of story? Was it, did it start off as a, I, I think you guys are sitting around a bar one night and you said, what would happen if, you know, somebody just stole your car? It's kind of how it started. We were pacing around in uh, our friend Spencer Suss's backyard in West Hollywood. Um, th just throwing ideas around. And it was kind of started as literally as simply as that. Um, and I don't remember, you know, Joel and I spent about 10 days thrashing the, the kind of skeleton of a story out, and then I went away and wrote the first draft. And, and yeah, it's weird. I keep hearing all this stuff about how elliptical and spare and how uh, not, not divulging of information the movie is, and yet I kind of weirdly feel like it's all there. You know, it's very lean. I mean, I wanted to make a movie that was very, that was very elemental and almost played like a sort of dark, violent fable. I think I'll start with, with the, the elephant in the room, the, the Twilight star, Robert Pattinson. Now, I always knew that he was better than Twilight. What made you realize it to give him this chance? It wasn't until I came to, I, you know, I knew I was going to start casting for the rover and I knew I wanted to see him. <clears throat> I went out and watched a couple of other things like Cosmopolis mm -hmm. and Water for Elephants and from what I can gather that, you know, that he's playing that kind of very still brooding thing that he does in Twilight. Having met him, I straight away realised that those characters he's playing in those movies, are that these are performances he's giving because he's not those guys. I felt like his performance and Guy Pearce's performance were really stunning performances and something very different than we'd have ever seen either of them do before. And I'm really, I'm wanting to know, how did you, how did you, what, did, what kind of work did you do to get them to deliver those kinds of performances and make those kinds of connections with each other as well as with those characters? Well, I mean, it's always a product of a lot of talking. I mean, you know, I'm, it's kind of a cliche, but I'm a subscriber to the, to the, uh, the idea that, uh, you know, 80% of a director's work is casting. You know, mm -hmm. if you get the right mm -hmm. people in the right places, um, then all you're really ever doing on set is just massaging. But, you know, before we were on set, there were a lot of conversations that needed to be had because there isn't necessarily a hell of a lot on the page that is, uh, you know, there aren't a hell of a lot of indicators as to how the characters should be played, you know. And this was certainly true of Guy's character. You know, I think we in our kind of that week before we started shooting when finally I, I got to have him with me in, in South Australia, we, you know, it became really apparent to both of us that what we were contemplating creating was really quite a monstrous creature of a character. And, but, you know, the beauty of it, the beauty of it is that, you know, as soon as, as soon as that talking was done, I almost immediately on set started feeling like I had done the casting bit right because mm -hmm. watching those two guys together was... Really exhilarating for me. The only thing that means anything right now is that I'm here and he's not. Your brother left you to die. That's what people do. You don't learn to fight, your death's gonna come real soon. On the note of the violence, I appreciated that it was bloody and it had some shoot em up aspects, but you still stopped to let us feel the weight of lives lost. How did you go about achieving that balance between having the violence and having the appreciation for the consequences? I don't know, violence is a weird thing. It doesn't surprise me that violence is so prevalent in cinema because it's so, it's so emotionally powerful, mm -hmm. you know? It's, I mean, I don't feel like violence in cinema for me, very, certainly not in the movies that I like, is about me kind of joyfully reveling in it. Right. It's because I'm afraid of it, you know? And that's, I like having the experience of being afraid of things in, when I go to the movies. There's a lot of style at, with the direction here. We have a lot of long, lingering shots on people's faces while they're thinking or they're listening to somebody else. What was the intent behind these, these, these lingering shots and all this, this beautiful style that you have here? Well, I mean, I think that that description would 
uh, apply most directly to Guy Pierce's character, who is a man who has been kind of completely and uh, completely emotionally drained when we meet him at the beginning of the movie. You know, I mean, he has he's so emotionally damaged. I wanted the world of the movie to feel like the kind of world that might have made this man just completely shut down. So this character Eric is mm, on the on the on the verge constantly. I feel like there's this undercurrent of this theme of when everything else is lost, how we kind of grasp at these these shreds of our humanity. I mean that for me is what the movie's about. It's about I mean and it's also one of the things that makes this movie for me, as strange as this sounds, a lot more hopeful than Animal Kingdom was. Mm -hmm. You know, Animal Kingdom, I think, is a much bleaker movie because it's an entirely... Where it ends is almost entirely loveless, you know? Mm -hmm. Whereas this one is exactly that for me. It's I wanted to make a really kind of elemental story about a small number of characters in a vast and very inhospitable landscape, discovering that they... You know, discovering that basic human need for connection with other people, you know? In, it's a special, not just dis, in spite of, but because of incredibly uh, challenging circumstances. David Michelle, filmmaker, writer, director of The Rover, thank you for stopping by and having a conversation with us about your film. Cheers. Cheers. Good, Close enough. Mm -hmm.